It is simply not worth it to reinvent the wheel. If you had the automation skills to scale and cost optimize, create and re-image existing session hosts, and to pump out any action that you could dream up through a script, I'd be talking about your app in this review. But since the folks at Nerdio already did it, let's find out if it's worth it. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Nerdio Manager is a third-party PaaS offering that you can set up from the Azure Marketplace, which will allow you to do a ton of stuff. There are no agents to deploy or manage, and it's just a native extension of the Azure Virtual Desktop control plane. And that'll help you to manage AVD or Windows 365. Now, if this is your second or third time here and I'm looking at you, Terry from Australia, then the universe wants you to click that subscribe button. So stop fighting it. Now, before we deploy Nerdio Manager, we need a few things first. And at the top of our list is permissions. Whoever is going to be deploying Nerdio in your environment needs to have Azure AD tenant global admin rights and be the owner of the subscription. You'll need at least one resource group to put the rest of your stuff, which will consist of an Azure Virtual Network with at least one subnet to build your cloud PCs on, a traditional Active Directory or Azure Active Directory domain services, more on that in a minute, and an SMB file share for FS Logics. And I'm actually going to be using two of them with Cloud Cache. So let's build it, shall we? Click the plus over at the top and then type in Nerdio. This is going to search the Azure Marketplace so that you don't have to go hunting around for scripts and templates and installers, which is going to save you time, which is really nice. Now, out of these four options, the one that we want today is Nerdio Manager for Enterprise. Select the subscription that you're the owner of, and I'm gonna to choose to provision a new resource group for all of those resources Nerdio is going to deploy for me. More on that in a second. And then go ahead and select your region, and then we're gonna start the build process. Now notice down here that one of the outputs of the build is going to be a new web page, and that's for Nerdio Manager itself. So you'll wanna bookmark that once we're done. And for me, this whole build process here took about four minutes or so. And that was the basic deployment. Now we need to get Nerdio configured for your environment. So you wanna copy that script block and then hit the button to launch your cloud shell. Paste in the code and let her rip. Now this script is going to do a lot of things for you to get everything set up. And all of that together consists of the enterprise application, which is what you just deployed from the Azure Marketplace, deploying two Azure Active Directory applications, configuring those applications with all the proper API permissions. It's going to also build and assign roles for everything that Nerdio will need. And this will also create a key vault and set up some secrets and certificates. And then there's the app service, which is a PaaS web server that's going to power the Nerdio Manager website. And that's going to work in conjunction with an Azure SQL PaaS server and database. Then there's application insights and log analytics for all your monitoring. And finally, create two Azure automation accounts. And this, in my opinion, is where the true magic of Nerdio lies. As I talked with Tim Warner recently on Twitter, it's your automation skills that are gonna separate you from the rest of the point and click admins and really elevate your game. And all of the cool functionality that Nerdio brings to the table are all powered through automation. We're almost done. Back on the Nerdio webpage, refresh the page, and now you need to grant admin consent for Nerdio to have access into your AD tenant and subscription. Read through all of this if you like, and then click accept at the bottom. Now there are several items on this punch list that we need to go through to finalize things and get them all connected to Nerdio. First is the registration. So go ahead and click here, fill out the form, and then click the register button. Now we need to select the network that Nerdio will use to manage and build your cloud PCs on. And that starts with our resource group. Go ahead and select that, then the virtual network itself, and finally the subnet, and then click OK. Next, we need to connect our existing Active Directory solution. And this could be either your traditional Active Directory or Azure AD domain services. Go ahead and fill all of that out, and you can even specify an OU if you like, and then click OK. 
Now we're almost there. We now need to select the SMB file shares we're gonna use for our FSLogix profiles. And at the top here, there's a checkbox, which I'll use for cloud cache. Then you can select from the dropdown any file share that's in the subscription that you're managing. But in my case, the file share I want is not present, so I'll type in my own, which happens to be my corporate DFS share that's located in the East US. And then I'll add a second share for my West US. That way Cloud Cache can replicate my storage between them. Now, if you also want, Nerdio Manager can take care of Windows 365 for you. And I'm good with that, so go ahead and click Enable. Now take note, this is specifically for Windows 365 Enterprise, which does not support full Azure AD join yet, but that feature is coming soon. So go ahead and read through everything here and then click OK and click to grant your admin consent for your tenant. Now that that's granted, you can close that particular tab. And now we have to select the object model of virtual desktop. This tells Nerdio whether you're using classic ARM or both. And if this is all new to you, then you should just select the Spring Update ARM model, since that's gonna have all the latest stuff going forward. Click Done, and then check the box here that you're verifying you've already granted your admin consent, and click OK. Welcome to Nerdio Manager. Now the real choice to be made here is one of cost to benefit ratio. Does the functionality of Nerdio justify the cost of Nerdio? Now you of course will need to make that decision for yourself and I'm gonna help you as best I can by looking at the three major areas that Nerdio can help you with and to see what you think. Now one of the most time consuming tasks in a VDI environment is the creation and maintenance of your images. Now if you do it the right way, you should be doing these updates to your images every month, but who has time for that? So click on desktop images on the left and then over on the right here, you wanna click on the add from Azure library button. Give your image a name and a description and then click the drop down for the Azure image. This is going to give you every image that's available in the Azure marketplace. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see any custom images and shared image gallery images that you have in your subscription that's being managed. Now for this example, I'm gonna pick Windows 11 Enterprise multi-session, and we're gonna build an image from scratch, and then we're gonna store it in a shared image gallery. Now we've got lots of other options here from picking your VM size to the OS disk size, then select the resource group that you wanna build this in, and I've just got two resource groups linked here, and I'll show you how to do that in another video. Then you can choose to join your Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, select your time zone and any certificates that you've already uploaded to Nerdio. Your local admin credentials can be specified as well as now building out your shared image gallery. At the bottom here, turn on the run scripted actions and that'll give you two more choices, Windows scripts and Azure runbooks. Let's open the Windows scripts and you'll see that there's a lot of scripts built right into Nerdio that you can run against your systems. So I'll type the word install and there's a whole list of install software scripts and those will just be baked right into your image. But do keep in mind that MSIX AppAttach is another option. So just be thinking about that when you're putting apps into your image. The thinner your image is, the less maintenance you're going to need. So we'll hit OK at the bottom and let the process go. And this is what it's gonna look like once it's complete. And since that was super easy, updating the image should also be just as easy. Click the drop down menu where it says powered on and select set as image. And this is almost exactly like the imaging process that we just did. You can enable scripted actions if you want to, to bake things right into your image. And then we can schedule this so it can happen automatically and reoccur on a monthly basis. So I would set this up after patch Tuesday and then just give it several days so you can do your testing first. Then set your reoccurrence as monthly and use this setting to refresh the base image from the Azure Marketplace, which will pull in all of those latest security and required patches that are baked into that new image already. And that'll just eliminate the need to run Windows Update entirely. And you can also choose to join your VM to Azure AD or your domain if you need to do that. And you should use the same gallery. That way this will become a new updated version of your existing image. 
We've got some more options here to stage the image as inactive so that way your new hosts that get built don't use that new image until you're ready for it. You can back up the image as well so you can keep all of those prior versions in case something goes wrong with this new one and you can always revert back as well as install your certificates just like you could before and you can add some change details at the bottom. Hit save and close to just schedule that to run in the future or click run now. Once complete, you'll see your image saved to your Azure Shared Image Gallery, and this one you can see is version 2. And that was a super easy process that will help you to simplify your image management, and that was less than five minutes of work in Nerdio Manager. And now this is going to run every month so that you can always be up to date. Now there's four ways to scale your Azure Virtual Desktop environment that'll help you save money. First is to right-size your virtual machines so that they fit your workloads. Next, you could change the size of your disks that are on your VMs. You could also power them off when you don't need them, which is how the scaling automation works natively. And you can also scale down the size of your FSLogix cloud storage. Now let's see how Nerdio handles this one. Now I already have a dynamic host pool deployed to get the ball rolling, and you can see that auto scale is currently off. Click the Manage Host button over here, and you'll see that I have three hosts already in my pool. Notice that each one of our hosts has four cores on 128 gigs of RAM and a P30 disk, which is a one terabyte SSD. And for my particular environment, that's really more resources than I need. Click the drop down arrow on the Add Session Host button and select Resize Your Hosts. And now you can choose a different VM size and go either up or down. Just be sure that you have all the needed cores available in your subscription. You can also choose to expand your operating system disk. And what I get from this too is that you should be able to shrink it. And in the tooltip here, it does say that the disk needs to be the same size or larger than the image that was used to create it. And I was able to successfully resize that disk up to one terabyte, but now I can't even shrink it down to 256 gigs, which I think I should be able to do. Another con here is that even when you do perform the disk resize up to a terabyte like I did, that just changes the size of the Azure disk, not the actual Windows partition underneath it. So you would need to do that manually or through another scripted process. And with all the power that Nerdio has here, it would seem to me something that they should easily be able to add. And who knows, maybe this suggestion will be used to improve Nerdio. Either way, once you've made your selections, you can set this process to run in groups of VMs so you don't drain the whole pool at once. And also you can select how many VMs should fail in the process before you just abort the whole job. And a real nice touch here is that you can check that box to integrate this with drain mode along the rest of the pool so that you don't get new users logging on as you're trying to get everything resized. And at the bottom here, you can schedule this whole process so that it runs within your maintenance window, which is obviously preferable. That way you impact your users as little as possible. And you can also send everybody who is logged in a console message telling them that they need to log off the box because you need to do some maintenance. So another con here that I'll point out is in the graphical interface, it's not always obvious where you should click. For example, to turn on auto scaling, you would actually click the word off under auto scaling. And that doesn't seem to be very intuitive to me. But once you've clicked on it, you wanna select that on button at the top, and then you've got your host pool information over here on the left. And you can scroll down and here's where you can set the base number of hosts that should be in your pool as well as the minimum active host and even burst capacity which is really nice then we have the scaling logic and there are quite a few options here as well now the native tool works based on the number of users logged in per cpu core and that would be the way that your average active sessions work you can also do this by CPU usage or the number of sessions that are available, which seems like a pretty good choice to have. Set your max sessions per host the way that it suits your environment. And then after that, we have this really important section of the scale in restrictions. You're gonna use this to set your end of business day, or you can just let it run all the time. And that's what I'm gonna do. Then we have the aggressiveness setting from high, medium, or low, and you can read through the tooltip here so you know how you should set that in your environment. 
For me, in this example, I'll just leave it on high. And there's, of course, more that we could dig into here, but that's good enough for now. Just add your console message at the bottom and hit save and close. Now over on the left, we've got the storage section and you can see Azure files and Azure NetApp files there. And see, I've got two different file shares set up. The top one is a standard file share and I don't have the ability to scale it. And since the size of the file share in standard doesn't correlate to any performance, there's really nothing to scale. But in the second one here, that's my premium file share, there absolutely is. So once again, click on where it says off, and here's all of your scaling options. Turn the switch on at the top, just like we did before. Then you can set your quota in the absolute numbers or relative numbers, and then set your minimums and maximums as you need to. Now what I think the coolest part of this is the scheduled quota increase. This is where you can set your share to be larger so you get more performance during those business hours, and then shrink it down to just the absolute size that you need so that you can save some money. So overall, I would give this particular area a good thumbs up. And let's take a look at our last topic in this review, and that is building a reliable environment. Now in Azure, of course, there are multiple layers of reliability. And one of the easiest things that you could implement here is spanning your hosts in your pool across availability zones. Go ahead and select your host pool, and then over here on the right, Click the drop down and select properties. Then on the left, you can click on VM deployments and check the box to distribute VMs across availability zones. Click the save button at the bottom and it's that easy. The next host to get provisioned will be spanning across whatever zones are available in your region. And of course, one of the big complexities of virtual desktop is thinking about disaster recovery. Over on the bottom left, you can see the word disaster recovery. So click on that. And at the top, there's a easy button to turn on and then just select your secondary network, resource group, your image, and another FS Logix file share that can be configured for your cloud cache. Now, as simple as that looks, of course, there's some underlying things that you've got to do in order to get that to work, like creating those resources and then onboarding them to Nerdio, but we'll save all of that for another video. So my final thoughts here on Nerdio Manager is that there is a ton of great automation that you can take advantage of. And I'm sure that the few cons that I pointed out along the way will get improved over time. And for me, honestly, one of the biggest negatives about Nerdio is that there's just too many words. I think that the design of the graphical interface has just too much text in it and not enough graphics. Now I do appreciate all of the information that's there in the GUI, but I'd prefer more icons and graphics and things like that that would help visually cue me into the thing I'm clicking on or what features are there and, and that type of thing. But the big question is how much does it cost? Well, cost is pretty easy. You can see that it's $4 per named user or $6 per concurrent user. And Nerdio definitely has a lot to offer, but the best way I could probably sum it all up is that Nerdio is both a cost optimization and management tool. And sure, you could do most of these things yourself with native tools and your own scripting, but the time and money that Nerdio can really help you save does kind of pay for the licenses itself. And there are many more ease of management and automation things that we just didn't have time to go into in this review that are all gonna help you to work smarter and not harder. And after all this, if you're still not sure, I'd suggest that you try Nerdio for free. Just go ahead and rewatch the video and deploy it just like I did and you'll get a 30 day free trial. Then you can make up your own mind. And let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you have any questions about Nerdio? Is there anything I didn't cover you want to see in a future video? And are you going to give it a spin? While you're down there, go ahead and click subscribe and the thumbs up if you appreciated this review. And check out my next review video right over there and the latest video at the Azure Academy up top. Thanks for joining me for this review and I will see you in the next one. Happy learning.